actually a bit of a social entrepreneur himself. He's going to again be adding a little bit more content to our theoretical discussion and practical discussion about what can universities do to respond to innovation. He's going to be looking at the generation of opportunities, the validation of opportunities, and exploitation of opportunities. Hi, everyone. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm too short, I can't see you. Okay, I'll do it here. Um, yes, my name is uh, Fernando Lorenzo. I am an academic and entrepreneur wannabe, I guess. Um, my, my research areas in entrepreneurship, uh, sustainable, sustainable development and education. So my uh, research investigates um, how individuals uh, uh, learn the cognitive process, uh, pedagogy, uh, their intentions and attitudes. And I design intervention aiming to change their behavior, and that is learning, I, I guess. So uh, this is a very general kind of presentation about how to cultivate, guess, yeah. uh, how to cultivate uh, uh, and foster innovative potential and entrepreneurial potential. So to me, they are both linked, so they are not separate. So uh, our target is the Gen Y or next Gen I, Gen, Gen D, and millennials. There are so many names. OK. So uh, I'm quite happy as well. I belong to that group. <laughs> so, uh, to, to us in the UK and our university, this is a very important agenda because uh, we believe that uh, cultivating their innovative potential will enhance their employability. So, uh, and therefore, they could become the entrepreneur. So, who will go out to the companies and work and generate ideas. And at the same time, the second point is quite important too. Uh, so, because it will enhance their entrepreneurial potential, so it, it will help them to create their own jobs and also create jobs for other people. So uh, this is a very important agenda. So for these reasons, our university, maybe I should stand in the spot. Uh -huh. Okay, so, so we, we kind of developed a three-year program aiming to develop a student's innovative potential. So uh, I, I did, before I, I designed the program, I did some research. So uh, and I created a, a quite a long, a long spec. This is just a summary. But in brief, uh, in order to teach the millennials, uh, we have allowed them to learn by uh, a trial and error, which is uh, this, this kind of uh, area was covered this morning. Because they play a lot of computer games, PlayStation, Xbox, and their iPhones, yeah? They learn by doing, they learn by making faults, making errors. And then the, the next attempt, they will make it better. So that's how we learn. So I have to allow them to learn from uh, action, uh, action learning approach and, and experiential learning. And then learning should be interactive, fun, and, and entertaining, because they expect you know, being in, in the university to be the same as like watching a movie, going to, you know, to play a computer game. So it, everything should be fun, because it is a product. What we create is a product and service. And then uh, they are social animals, so we have to allow social learning environment, because we allow them to co-construct and share knowledge and learn from each other, which is very uh, similar or linked to the Web 2.0, because they all co-create knowledge and share information. And we have to make sure they are connected yeah, because we believe that, you know, like, you know, just remembering something is not that important nowadays. Knowing where to get information and how to use information to solve real problems, it's more important. And therefore, we've got to make sure that they are connected to the internet. So we've got to give them the Wi-Fi service, uh, a laptop, or whatever they need to use. And then, uh, this was also covered in the, in the morning, we've got to create a very clear st structure, provide them with guidance and support. But at the same time, we've got to give them freedom yeah, to innovate. Yeah? So we create a structure, but then within that structure, they've got to be free to generate ideas. So um, now this is uh, just a general model of what I created in my university. So in year one, we only ask them to generate opportunities. So it is about generating ideas, finding concepts, and asking questions, formulating problems, uh, finding opportunities, and coming up with possibilities. So it is all about creativity. And I'll, I'll, later on, I'll tell you some difficulties to convince my faculty members, because some of them might see me as a Mickey Mouse, because they argue that this is a Mickey Mouse training program, not very academic. Uh, okay, now, during this process, uh, it's true, it's true, that we can encourage to find, play, use, and generate information to stimulate that, that whole process. And then in year two, we ask them, now, okay, after you generate a lot of ideas, now it is time to use your logical brain. Yeah? So you should compare, evaluate, and screen opportunities. And then in year three, this is the interesting part, and it costs a lot of money as well. Okay. 
Uh, it is about exploiting opportunity. Okay, coming up with some ideas. Uh, so, so what? Yeah, you should have a portfolio full, full of stuff where you don't use. Like, you know, a lot of designers, they end up in this position. So then in year two, they validate their ideas, but then what? So what? Yeah, you, you validated, then, then yeah, you still don't have anything. So in year three, we encourage them, and we create a, a kind of a support to allow them to exploit their opportunity by starting up their business uh, related to their concepts uh, derived from uh, the development year one and two. So they, they work in business innovator with real entrepreneurs. And then there's a post-graduation. So uh, towards the end, yes, they could continue to run their business if they can't find a job. If they can find a job, maybe they can use all that kind of a, a, a experience they gain from this program and apply it back to their organization. Now, throughout this process, mini lectures, activities are structured to support the process, but students are free to innovate in this process. So now let me cover some areas that, that links to how to cultivate uh, innovative potential in university. Oh, oh, by the way, I forgot uh, some support areas. So, yes, we have support from academics, guest speakers, mentors, and real entrepreneurs. And then more support like uh, you know, technologies, activities, and assignments. And then we also show them different models and frameworks, activities, and examples. So uh, to allow them to know the process. OK, um, yeah, this is just on my wish list. Yeah? So I, I try to create a center where I can capture all the tools and the design thinking tools and methodology to support this overall process. But maybe this will never happen. I don't know. That's on my wish list. OK, now, how to foster creativity. So I, I guess this is uh, very important, especially in this uh, from, uh, phase. We have to reinforce mind rules to tell them that you know there is no right or wrong. Yeah, there is only interesting. Yeah, but you shouldn't judge your ideas while you're generating ideas. So you, we should adopt the divergent process. It's about more. Yeah, not about. It's about quantity. And then uh, uh, and then arrange more kind of uh, you know. Uh, Kind of rules. Uh, one, one quite important one is that we always tell them you can gender create anything that you like. So anything goes as long as it is ethical, yeah, and it's legal. Because sometimes, you know, I remember this week I got students proposing to go, go to Colombia to uh, get a lot of cocaine and then take it back to uh, England. Uh, and, and then, well, I guess traditional, I guess professors, they might go, what the hell? Yeah, they will like, jump straight to conclusion. But then I went there to ask them, what, what, tell me about your concept. And what I found out is that he used a very kind of a, I don't know, strange kind of a scenario to allow him to learn. He used this selling cocaine scenario to create, to create quite a range of strategies to allow him to launch his business in the UK. But then, I, you know, the, the outcome is not ethical and it's wrong, but he learned quite a lot by using that unethical kind of a scenario. But then, of course, I also teach proper social responsibility to cover all that. <laughs> and, uh, yes, okay, now cultivating uh, uh, students. We believe that, yes, they have to know the process. If they don't know, like it was covered by Joe this morning, if they don't know how to swim, then maybe there is a risk for them to kind of die. So we have to show them, you know, give them some instructions, some tools, you know, the process of our innovation. And then we believe that they only learn by experiencing the process. They learn by doing, yeah? And then we only support the process and we create the structure. And then teaching 2.0, which is the new version of teaching. So uh, we academics or teachers or lecturers, we are no longer the holder of knowledge. Yeah? So uh, our job should be like mentors and facilitators. So training will be, not, not all, but I guess inquiry base will allow them to learn via this uh, approach. And we only guide, we encourage, we ask questions, we don't give answers. They have to find the answers. We only stimulate that brain. And then uh, they find answers. Now finally. Outcomes, tangible outcomes, yes, they create some business, but to us, whatever they create is not that important because what they create today will be different like in three months' time. So yes, if they like their business, then then run it, yeah, make some money. This year we got a student, he, I think revenue is about 15,000 uh, pounds after three months. Yeah, and he kind of found some cheap bike from America, he uh, export them to the UK, import, import, export, import, to the UK, no, export. What's the right name? <laughs> in culture, the UK, yeah, I kind of lost it. So, uh, yeah, you found you know, this opportunity. And then, the intangible outcome is very important, which is the process. <coughs> it is in here, they will take this uh, with them uh, to the workplace or maybe even support their entrepreneurial career. So, uh, I think only, it only took me 10 minutes, and this is like what I think. But this is only what I think, and of course, you all have your own views about this too, and we should all call 
share and co create new knowledge about education. Thank you. I was surprised to hear that you had uh, entrepreneur, music entrepreneurs uh, or uh, okay. pop stars in, in, in yes. the pop music area, um, but you have no music department. So I was wondering if if your uh, university would allow you to go out, like Sanford does, to get these entrepreneurs or these successful pop stars to contribute money to the music department. That's what Stanford does. <laughs> get them to put the names on the buildings. Yeah, it's a very good idea. I'll mention that to our question. Try to, yeah, fundraising from those celebrities. Thank you. I, I, I just, by the way, I just I brought uh, four books of uh, creative education in Taiwan. It's from elementary to universities, but selected 10 stories. I did four copies, so if you're interested, you can get it. Well, I just have a question for a um, If you said that it was a difficult to, for the accreditation to keep up with how fast it would at least be changing, and I, I can understand that having seen the Bologna process in, in uh, Germany, uh, going to the Bachelor and Master's, um, why do you, do you think you're going to need accreditation, or why do you bother with it at all uh, once you have a brand that people understand? Um, it's, uh, the accreditation is useful and necessary for public funding of any kind. Um, also, students that want to come, often they want to get the government want to sponsor them to come. But we'll only sponsor them to come to an accreditation institution. Right? Now, uh, we are trying to stay away from the accreditation because the negatives of it far outweigh the benefits. The, uh, the Harvard MBA, for example, is not an accredited program. Right? And our brand and the, the, the results we've achieved don't, we don't need it. But there, the Department of Education uh, wants us to get accredited and uh, fall under a regulatory budget. So we're trying to stay a little bit outside. Um, yeah, as a more maybe traditional student than what was described in the last process and the singularity, um, I, I don't know if you got into this, but is, is there no basic class structure? I mean, I'm, we're, we're entering our, I think, 14th and 15th classes. And it's been very structured, one, you know, point A to point Z. Uh, your program sounded amazing. One, it's not like they let you design it. Is that a, is that a correct assumption? They, they did let you design it? Yeah. And then you have, a, it sounds like you maybe have a co cohort that works together in really non-traditional, almost a business uh, from point A of generating ideas to filtering it down to an end process, but without the, the structure of, well, I'm going to buy this textbook for $150 and read all 10 chapters. Is that is that a correct assumption, or do you have textbooks that you that you follow and like more like a traditional university? Um, I use a number of textbooks and, and I read literature, but then I use all those information to allow me to come up with this program. And also, well, although I say. It, it, Students are allowed to, to innovate in that process. I have quite a lot of checkpoints where they would have to kind of show me what they have achieved. So one of the assessment kind of methods we use is a portfolio. So to, because I, as I argue, the outcome is not that important. The process is. So I use a portfolio to assess their progress, to, to allow me to see whether they have used a particular tool, whether they have uh, tried to uh, uh, develop a particular uh, uh, kind of a, a concept, uh, tackling a particular area. So. Yes, there, there are a lot of checkpoints where they would have to show me that they have engaged. So, so I know that they have followed the whole process of their development. Yeah. It almost sounds like a, like a vocational school for management, for innovation. Yes, this, this is exactly the argument that I am getting. And, and I, sometimes I feel like I am a Mickey you know, walking in my university. Because a, a lot of them, I have to convince them, of course. They argue that, well, we are a university. It should be more kind of uh, academic. You know, it should link to more theories. But I, my, my, one of my research areas is in education. And uh, it's not new that uh, students, they, they argue that the way we teach is not working. So I'm, I'm basically applying all the recommendations found in education research. And uh, at the moment, I've got a survey trying to uh, link uh, kind of a student's uh, learning preferences 
So try to understand whether what I am doing is the right thing. So I don't have the young, kind of uh, the result yet, but I am quite confident that I will prove that what I'm doing is not the only way. It's one.